students in this video i am going to solve 2021 maths question paper of embos here question number 1 of section a it is given that find the prime factorization of 96 we have to prime factorize 96 96 is divisible by 2 so if you divide by 2 2 48 je 96 48 divided by 2 it will be 24 24 divided by 2 will be 12 12 divided by 2 6 and 6 if you divide by 2 3 So we can write ninety six equals to one two three four five two to the power five into three. So that is the required answer. In question number two, it is given that find the fifth term of the sequence n equals to two n plus five. This sequence is given to you, and we have to find the fifth term. For this, here n is two n plus five. You consider n equal to five. As we are to calculate fifth term, so a five equals to two replace n by five. Plus five, five to the ten, ten plus five, fifteen. So fifteen is the required answer. Question number three: Write the discriminant of the quadratic equation three x square minus twice x plus eight equals to zero. This is the quadratic equation, and we have to find the discriminant. Now, in this equation, three x square minus twice x plus eight equals to zero. If I compare this with a x square plus b x plus c equals to zero, then a will be three, b will be minus two, and c will be eight. And we know that discriminant formula is b square minus 4ac. B is minus 2, so minus 2 square minus 4. A is 3 and c is 8. So 2 to the 4 because minus into minus is plus, so it will become 2 to the 4 minus 3 to the 12. 12 into 8 is 96. 4 minus 96 is minus 92. So this is the required answer. Question number four. It is given. What is the area of an equilateral triangle of side A? Here each side is a, and we have to write the area of the equilateral triangle. Now we know area of the equilateral triangle is root three by four into side square. Here each side is a, therefore area of the equilateral triangle is root three by four into a square unit square. In question number five, it is given that in how many points does a line intersect the circle at most? Now suppose this is a circle. If I draw a line, maximum it will cut at two points. So answer will be. Two. Question number six. It is given. Find the area of a circle whose radius is ten point five meter, and here you have to use pi equal to twenty two by seven. Here it is given. Radius is ten point five meter. Ten point five can be written as hundred and five by ten. Now if I cancel by five, it will be twenty one by two meter. So radius is twenty. So radius is twenty one by two meter. Now area of a circle. We know the formula pi r square. Pi as given in the question twenty two by seven into r square so twenty one by two into twenty one by two because it is r square we have to write twice seven three ja twenty one two eleven ja so three into eleven thirty three into twenty one by two so if I multiply it will be six ninety three by two and after division it will be three forty six point five meter square and that's the required answer. In question number seven, it is given evaluate sine sixty degree cos thirty degree plus cos sixty degree sine thirty degree. This is the question sine sixty cos thirty degree plus cos sixty degree sine of thirty degree. We have to replace them with their values. Sine sixty we know it is root three by two into cos thirty also root three by two plus cos sixty is half and sine thirty is also half. Now root three into root three is three two two is four. Plus one one ja one two two ja four. Now, if you take the LCM, LCM of four and four will be four. Four divided by four one one into three three plus four divided by four one 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 ja one three plus one four four by four it will give one. The next question, question number eight, it is given that find the class mark of the class ten to twenty five. Here lower limit is ten, upper limit is twenty five. To find the class mark of ten to twenty five. We have to write lower limit plus upper limit divided by two. Here lower limit is ten, upper limit is twenty-five. If I add, it will be thirty-five by two, which will give seventeen point five. In question number nine, it is given that solve the quadratic equation three x square minus x minus two by factorization. Question is three x square minus x minus two equals to zero, and we have to solve it by factorization. Now, since we have to go for middle term factorization, we will first multiply coefficient of x square with a constant term, three into minus two. 
3 into minus 2 is minus 6. Since it is negative, we need two numbers whose difference is 1 because here it is 1x and product of the number should be minus 6. Now we know 3 and 2 if I take 3 minus 2 is 1 and 3 to just 6. So 3x square minus instead of 1x we can write 3 minus 2 x minus 2 equals to 0 3x square minus 3x minus minus plus twice x minus 2 equals to 0 from first 2 I can take 3x common so we are left with x minus 1 from last 2 we can take 2 common x minus 1 equals to 0 so again if I take x minus 1 common it will be x minus 1 into 3x plus 2 now either x minus 1 is 0 or 3x plus 2 equals to 0 from here x will be 1 minus 1 if I shift it will become 1 3x equals to minus 2 x will be minus 2 by 3 therefore required value of x is 1 or minus 2 by 3 which is the required answer in question number 10 it is given if a equals to 30 degree verify that sine of 2 I say equals to 2 sine a cos a here it is given a is 30 degree if you take the left hand side where it is given sine of 2 I say we have to replace a by 30 degree so it will be sine of 2 into 30 which will give sine of 60 and we know sine of 60 is root 3 by 2 again we have to do right hand side in the right hand side it is given 2 sine a cos a so 2 sine a a is 30 cos a a is 30 2 sine 30 is half cos 30 is root 3 by 2 these two can be cancelled so we are left with root 3 by 2 and root 3 by 2 here also we got root 3 by 2 that means LHS equals to RHS in question number 11 it is given find the value of x where x lies between 0 and 90 degree in 10 of 3x equal to sine of 45 degree cos 45 degree plus sine of 30 degree here it is given 10 of 3x is sine 45 cos 45 plus sine of 30 so 10 of 3x equals to sine 45 is 1 by root 2 cos 45 is 1 by root 2 plus sin 30 is half so 10 of 3x equals to 1 1 ja 1 root 2 into root 2 is 2 plus half so 10 of 3x will be here 2 will be the LCM 2 divided by 2 1 1 1 ja 1 plus 2 divided by 2 1 1 1 ja 1 so 10 of 3x equals to 1 plus 1 2 2 by 2 it will give 1 10 of 3x is 10 of 45 because 10 45 is 1 just because in the left hand side it is 10 in the right hand side also it must be 10 so we got 10 of 3x is 10 of 45 which means 3x equals to 45 degree so x equals to 45 by 3 so x equal to 15 degree therefore required value of x is 15 degree here in the odd section it is given in triangle ABC right angled at B if AB is 5 BC is 12 and AC is 13 find sin A and tan A as given in the question in triangle ABC right angle at B it is given AB equals to 5 BC equals to 12 and AC equals to 13 but here it is given find sin A and tan A we have to find the ratios in terms of angle A so it is better to draw like this so just draw it like this ABC here it is 13 here it is 12 here it is 5 and we have to find sin a and tan a so this is the base angle so sin a will be bc by ac we know some people have so perpendicular by hypotenuse so it will be 12 by 13 again tan a turn permanently black turn permanently black or you can say perpendicular by base it will be 12 by 5 so answer is 12 by 13 and 12 by 5 in question number 12 it is given find the distance between the pair of points minus 6,7 and minus 1 and minus 5 here first point is minus 6,7 let it be x1 y1 and second point is x2 y2 and we have to find the distance between the points so we have to use distance formula and we know distance formula is root over x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square now x2 is minus 1 x1 is minus 6 so x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 y2 is minus 5 minus y1 whole square minus 1 minus minus plus 6 whole square plus minus 5 minus 7 both are negative so it will be added minus 5 minus 7 will be minus 12 whole square now 6 minus 1 will be 5 so it will be 5 square plus minus minus plus it will be 12 square which will be 144 
5 square is 25 plus 144 which will give 169 and root over 169 is 13 because 13 square is 169 so distance between the points is 13 unit in question number 13 it is given find the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment joining the points p 12 comma minus 8 and q 8 comma minus 4 here this is one point p 12 comma minus 8 and q 8 comma minus 4 we can consider x1 y1 12 comma minus 8 and x2 y2 8 comma minus 4 since we have to find the coordinate of the midpoint and we know midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 by 2 y1 plus y2 by 2 so we can write x comma y is x1 plus x2 by 2 y1 plus y2 by 2 where x y is the coordinate of the midpoint let it be x comma y now x1 plus x2 12 plus 8 by 2 and y1 plus y2 will be minus 8 minus 4 by 2 12 plus 8 is 20 20 by 2 and here it will be minus 12 by 2 20 by 2 is 10 and minus 12 by 2 is minus 6 therefore the coordinate of the midpoint is 10 comma minus 6 in the or section of question number 13 it is given find the coordinates of the centroid of the triangle whose vertices are 8 comma 0 0 comma 6 and 8 comma 12 here x1 y1 is 8 comma 0 x2 y2 is 0 comma 6 and x3 y3 8 comma 12 so these are the vertices and we have to find the coordinate of the centroid we know the formula for centroid is x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 and y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3 so here 8 plus 0 plus 8 divided by 3 and here 0 plus 6 plus 12 divided by 3 now if i add 8 plus 8 16 16 by 3 and here 12 plus 6 is 18 18 by 3 so required answer is 16 by 3 comma 6 which is the required coordinate of the centroid question number 14 in the figure below ab is a common tangent to the given circles which touch externally at P. If AP is 3.2, find the length of AB. Now here, two circles are given and the AB is the common tangent. We know length of the tangents drawn from an external point to a circular equal. So for this circle, AP equals to PT because length of tangents for this circle, AP is one tangent and PT is another tangent. So for the first circle, AP equals to PT for the second circle pb equal to pt clear for the first circle ap equals to pt and for the second circle pb equal to pt since it is given ap equal to 3.2 so pt also will be 3.2 so ap equal to pt equal to 3.2 centimeter again pb equal to pt now ab equals to ap plus pb ap we know it is 3.2 and since both of them are equal to pt so pb also will be 3.2 so 3.2 plus 3.2 it will give 6.4 centimeter therefore length of AB is 6.4 centimeter question number 14 this part is for the blind students here first question is define a second and second question is a tangent cannot be drawn from a point lying within the circle and you have to say true or false for the first part we can say second it is a line which cuts a circle at two distinct points now here in this circle this is the circle this is one line which cuts the circle at two points then this line is called second we know a tangent is a line which touches the circle at a single point if the point is inside the circle we cannot draw the tangent so the given statement is true in question number 15 this figure is given hey, here it is given that abc is a triangle d and e are the points on the sides ab and ac such that d is parallel to bc AD is given X, DB is X minus 2, AE is X plus 2, and EC is X minus 1. We have to find the value of X. So here, in this triangle, these two lines are parallel. So we can use BPT or Thales theorem. According to this theorem, in a triangle, if these two lines are parallel, then we can write AD by DB equal to A by EC. So put the values X by X minus 2 equal to X plus 2 by X minus 1. Now if I cross multiply, x into x minus 1 equals to x plus 2 into x minus 2 x into x x square x into 1 x equals to a plus b a minus b s square minus b square so it will be x square minus x this x square if i transfer it will be minus x square equals to minus 2 to the 4 
x square and minus x square can be cancelled. So minus x equal to minus 4. Therefore, x equals to 4. Question number 15, which is for the blind students. First part is define a triangle. And second part, the greatest side of a dash triangle is called hypotenuse. This is the fill in the blank. For the first part, we can write a plane figure bounded by three line segments is called a triangle. And second part, it is given the longest side of a right angled triangle is called hypotenuse. So answer of second part is right angled triangle. Question number 16, I am not doing now because you can see this one in my construction videos of class 10. In the second part, which is also for the blind students, it is given when are two triangles said to be similar. And second part, define an equilateral triangle. In the first part, two triangles are said to be similar when the corresponding angles are equal and corresponding sides are proportional. In the second part, it is given define an equilateral triangle. A triangle whose all the sides are equal is called an equilateral triangle. Now, in question number 17, it is given that the two tangents drawn from an external point P to a circle with center O, P to a circle with center O, PA and PB. It is given that angle A, P, B, this is 70 degree. We have to find the value of angle A, O, B. Now here in this sum, it is given that since PA is a tangent and O is the radius here, PA is a tangent and O is the radius. So this angle will be 90 degree. Similarly, this angle also will be 90 degree. So we can since PA is a tangent and O is a radius, so angle PAO 90, PBO 90. Now in this figure, this is 90, this is 90, this angle is 70 and we have to find AOB. So in quadrilateral PAOB, sum of these four angles will be 360. Three angles are known, so we can find the fourth one. We can write here in quadrilateral AOBP, angle PAO plus AOB plus PBO plus APB equal to 360, 90 plus angle AOB plus 90 plus APB. It is given 17, the question is 360. So, angle AOB plus, if I add this 3, it will be 250 equal to 360. Therefore, angle AOB equal to 360 minus 250, which will give 110. In the odd section of question number 17, it is given, in the figure below, AD is the bisector of angle A, intersecting the side BC at D. AB is 5 cm, AC is 4.2 cm, DC is 2.1 cm. We have to find the length of BD. Here, since AD bisects angle BAC, so AB by AC will be BD by DC. So we can write since AD bisects BAC, so AB by AC equal to BD by DC. In the question, it is given AB is 5, AC is 4.2, and CD is 2.1. So if we replace these three values, 5 by 4.2 equals to BD by 2.1, and we have to find the value of BD. If I cross multiply 4.2 into BD, equals to 5 into 2.1. So BD equals to 5 into 2.1 divided by 4.2. If I cancel this two, it will be 2. So BD equals to 5 by 2, which will give 2.5. Therefore, 2.5 centimeter is the required length of BD. In the second part of question number 17, which is for the blind students, it is given that state basic proportionality theorem, which you can write from the textbook. Second part, a tangent to a circle is dash to the radius to the point of contact it will be perpendicular it is the statement of theorem 10.1 so this too i am not doing in question number 18 you can see find the angle subtended at the center of a circle of radius 5 cm by an arc of length 5 pi by 3 here arc length is given radius is given we have to find the angle now here radius is given 5 cm arc length l is 5 pi by 3 and we have to find the theta now, arc length L is 5 pi by 3. Formula for arc length is pi r theta by 180 degree equals to 5 pi by 3. So, theta equals to 5 pi by 3. 180 will go in the numerator and pi r will come in the denominator. Now, here 3 and 180 can be cancelled. It will give 60. So, theta equal to 5 pi into 60 by pi r. Again, pi and pi can be cancelled. Now theta equals to 5, 60, radius in the question it is given 5, so this 5 will cancel, so ultimately we are get theta equal to 60 degree, therefore required angle is 60 degree. 
In the odd section of question number 18, it is given the difference between the circumference and the radius of a circle is 37 cm. Find the area of the circle and we have to use pi equal to 22 by 7. So here in this question, suppose radius is r. According to the question, difference between the circumference and the radius is 37. Circumference is 2 pi r minus r equal to 37. From here, r can be taken common. 2 i pi minus 1 is 37 r. 2 i pi is 22 by 7 minus 1 equals to 37 r. Here, 7 will be the LCM. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 into this will give 44 minus 7 divided by 1 is 7. 7 1 just 7 is 37. So, r into 44 minus 7 is 37 by 7 is 37. Now, if I cross multiply, r will be 37 into 7 by 37. It can be cancelled. So, r will be 7 centimeter. Therefore, area of the circle, formula is pi r square. Pi is 22 by 7 and radius is 7. So, 7 into 7. This 7 can be cancelled. So, 22 into 7 is 154 centimeter square. Question number 19 is, a bag contains 6 red balls, 8 white balls, 5 green balls and 3 black balls. One ball is drawn at random from the bag. Find the probability that the drawn ball is white and second part is red or black. Now here there are 6 red balls. We can write red balls equal to 6, white balls 8, green balls 5 and there are 3 black balls. So altogether there are 22 balls. If I add I am going to add 22. Now in the first part it is given probability of white ball. Now we know the formula for probability is number of available outcome by total number of possible outcomes. So probability of white will be number of white balls. How many white balls are there? 8. So it will be 8 by 22. If I cancel by 2 it will be 4 by 11. In the second part it is given probability of red or black. So there are 6 red balls and 3 black balls. So number of red or black balls will be 6 plus 3, 9. So probability of red or black will be 9 by 22. It cannot be cancelled. So this is the required answer. Question number 20. Find the HCF and LCM of 84, 90 and 120 by applying prime factorization method. If we prime factorize 84, it will be 242 ja, 221 ja, 37 ja. So 84 will be 2 square into 3 into 7. For 90, 245 ja, 315 ja and 35 ja. For 120, 260 ja, 120, 230 ja, 60. 2, 15, 30, 3, 5, 15. So we can write 84 equal to 2 square into 3 into 7, 90 equals to 2 into 3 square into 5, and 120 equals to 2 cube into 3 into 5. In case of HCF, we have to write the common terms. Out of this, 2 is common, and from this, 3 is common. 5 and 7, they are not common terms. So 2 into 3, 6. So HCF is 6. For LCM, we have to write all the terms with their maximum power. Among 2, maximum power is 2 cube, so it will be 2 cube. From 3, 3 square, 5, maximum power is 1, and for 7, only 7. So if I multiply, 2 cube is 8, 3 square is 9, 5, 7 is 35. Now if I multiply 8 into 35, it will be 218 to 9. If I multiply, it will be 2520. So HCF is 6 and LCM is 2520. For the second part it is given, given that HCF of 306 and 657 is 9, find the LCM of 306 and 657. Here HCF of these two numbers is given 9, we have to find LCM. We know the formula HCF into LCM is product of the numbers. HCF is 9 into LCM, product of the numbers will be 306 into 657. So LCM will be 306 into 657 divided by 9. If I cancel, it will be 73. And if you multiply, it will be 22338, which is the required LCM. In question number 21, it is given which term in the AP 68, 64, 60 is minus 8. So here in this sum, A is 68. Common difference will be second term minus first term, that is 64 minus 68, which will give minus 4. And here n -th term is minus 8. And we have to find n. We know the formula a n equals to a plus n minus 1 into d. Here a n is minus 8. So a plus n minus 1 into d equal to minus 8. So a is 68 plus n minus 1. D is minus 4 equal to minus 8. Be careful, you have to write in bracket. If you don't write bracket, then it will be minus 4. And if I write in bracket, then it will be multiplied. So 68 plus minus minus 4 into n 4n 
माइनस माइनस प्लस फोर वन जा फोर इक्वल टू माइनस एट सिक्सटी एट प्लस फोर इज सेवेंटी टू माइनस फोर एन इज माइनस एट माइनस फोर एन इक्वल टू माइनस एट माइनस सेवेंटी टू सो माइनस फोर एन इक्वल टू माइनस एट्टी इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई बोथ साइड बाई माइनस इट विल बिकम फोर एन इक्वल्स टू एट्टी एन इक्वल्स टू एट्टी बाई फोर एट्टी बाई फोर इज ट्वेंटी दे आर फोर एन इज ट्वेंटी सो ट्वेंटी एट टर्म इज माइनस एट इन द ऑर्ट सेक्शन इट इज गिवेन फाइन द सम ऑफ हंड्रेड टर्म्स ऑफ द ए पी टू फोर सिक्स हियर फर्स्ट टर्म इज टू कॉमन डिफरेंस इज फोर माइनस टू टू एंड हियर एन इज गिवेन हंड्रेड एंड वी हैव टू फाइन द साम सो साम ऑफ एन टर्म्स फॉर्मूला इज एन बाई टू टू आई से प्लस एन माइनस वन इन टू डी हियर एन इज हंड्रेड हंड्रेड बाई टू टू आई से ए इज टू सो टू इंटू टू प्लस एन माइनस वन हंड्रेड माइनस वन इंटू टू हंड्रेड बाई टू इज फिफ्टी टू टू जा फोर प्लस हंड्रेड माइनस वन नाइन्टी नाइन नाइन्टी नाइन टू जा वन नाइन्टी एट सो फिफ्टी इंटू After adding four and one ninety eight, it will be two hundred two. So if I multiply, it will be one zero one zero zero, which is the required sum. In question number twenty two, it is given find a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are minus five and minus seven. Here zeros are minus five and minus seven. So first of all, we calculate sum of zeros minus five and minus seven. If I add, it will be minus twelve. Product of zeros minus five into minus seven minus into minus plus five seven is thirty five. Now we know family of quadratic polynomial is given by p x equals to any constant k x square minus sum of zeros into x plus product of zeros. This is the formula, and where k is a constant. Now k x square minus sum of zeros we got minus twelve minus twelve x plus product of zeros is thirty five. K x square minus minus plus twelve x plus thirty five. Now, if we take any constant, suppose we are taking k equal to one. By taking k equal to one, one required quadratic polynomial is x square plus 12x plus 35. 23. It is given. Evaluate 4 by cot square 30 plus 1 by sin square 30 minus 2 cos square 45 minus sin square 0. Here, this is the question. So, if we replace these values, so we are going to get 4 cot 30 is root over 3. So, root 3 square plus 1 by sin square 30 sin 30 is half half square minus 2 cos square 45 cos 45 is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 square minus sin 0 is 0 so 0 square is 0 only so it will be 4 root 3 square is 3 plus 1 by 1 half square 1 square is 1 2 square is 4 minus 2 into half minus 0 4 by 3 this 4 will go in the numerator so it will become 4 minus 1 Here, if I take LCM because here it is one, here it is one. If we take the LCM of three and one, it will be three. Three divided by three, one four one is four plus four, three divided by one three three four is twelve minus three divided by one three three one is three. Now twelve plus four is sixteen. Sixteen minus three will be thirteen by three, which will give four one by three. This is the required value. In the second part of question number twenty-three, it is given. Ten of a minus b is one by root three, and ten of a plus b is root three, where a plus b lies between zero and ninety degree, and a is given greater than b. We are to find the value of a and b. Now here, ten of a minus b is given one by root three, so ten of a minus b will be ten of thirty degree. One by root three is ten thirty. Just because in the left hand side it is ten, here also we have to express in terms of ten. So a minus b is thirty degree. Again, it is given ten of a plus b is root three. So ten of a plus b, ten of sixty, a plus b sixty. So you got equation number one, equation number two. If I add these two equations, a minus b plus a plus b, thirty plus sixty. Now b and b can be cancelled. A plus a twice a is ninety. A will be ninety divided by two. So a will be forty-five degree. Now equation number one is a minus b is thirty. In equation one, if we replace a by forty-five. 45 minus b is 30. 45 minus 30 equals to b. So b equals to 15 degree. We have just transferred b and 30. So we got a equal to 45 degree and b equals to 15 degree. In question number 24, it is given sum of two numbers is 16 and sum of the reciprocals is 1 by 3. Find the numbers. So here we can consider let the numbers be x and 16 minus x because it is given sum of the number 16. So, if one number is x, other one will be 16 minus x. Now, according to the question, sum of their reciprocal. So, first number is x. Its reciprocal is 1 by x. 
plus second number is 16 minus x is reciprocal is 1 by 16 minus x and it will give 1 by 3. Now if you take the LCM of these two x into 16 minus x this LCM divided by x it will give 16 minus x plus this LCM divided by 16 minus x it will be x equal to 1 by 3. This x and this x can be cancelled. So 3 into 16 48 and here x into 16, 16x, x into x, x square. So if I transfer in the other side, x square minus 16x plus 48 equals to 0. Here, first term and last term, if I multiply, that is coefficient of x square and the constant, I will get 48. Since it is positive, we need two numbers whose sum should be 16 and product should be 48. We can consider 12 and 4. So instead of 16, we can write minus 12x and minus 4x plus 48 equals to 0. From first to x common, x minus 12. From last to minus 4, if I take common, x minus 12 is left. So x minus 12, x minus 4. So either x minus 12 is 0, which will give x equal to 12. And x minus 4, 0, which will give x equal to 4. Now if I consider x equal to 12, first number will be 12. And second number we have considered 16 minus x. 16 minus 12, 4. So numbers will be 12 and 4. And if I consider x equals to 4, then second number will be 16 minus 4, 12. So numbers will be 4 and 12. So required numbers are 4 and 12. Second part of question number 24. The sum of the numerator and denominator of a fraction is 12. If the denominator is increased by 3, the fraction becomes half. Find the fraction. Here we can consider let the numerator be x, denominator be y. So fraction will be x by y. In the question it is given sum of the numerator and denominator. Sum of these two is 12. So x equals to 12 minus y. Let it be equation number 1. Again it is given that if denominator is increased by 3. Here denominator is y. If we increase by 3 it becomes 1 by 2. So if I cross multiply 2x equals to y plus 3. So 2 from 1. Here you can write using 1. Instead of x we can write 12 minus y. y plus 3. 24 minus 2y. y plus 3 minus 2y minus y, 3 minus 24, so minus 3y is minus 21, 3y is 21, y equal to 21 divided by 3, so y equal to 7. From equation 1, x equal to 12 minus y, so here we can have 12 minus 7, 12 minus 7 is 5, so numerator is 5, denominator is 7, therefore fraction is 5 by 7. In question number 25, it is given a tower stands vertically on the ground. From a point on the ground 20 meter away from the foot of the tower, the angle of elevation of the top is 60 degree. What is the height of the tower? So suppose AB is the tower and C is the observation point which is at a distance of 20 meter. Here it is given angle of elevation is 60 and we have to find the height of the tower that is AB. So we can write here let AB be a tower and C be the observation point. Here BC equals to 20 meter, angle ACB is 60 degree. And we have to find the height of the tower that is AB. And relation between perpendicular and base is given by 10 theta. So we can write 10 of 60 is AB by BC. Now 10 60 is root 3. AB by BC is given 20. So AB equal to 20 into root 3. If I cross multiply, I am going to get 20 root 3. Root 3 in the question it is given that it is 1.732. If I multiply, I am going to get 34.640. Therefore height of the tower is 34.64 meter. In the second part it is given the string of a kite is 100 meter long and it makes an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal. Find the height of the kite assuming that there is no slack in the string and we have to use root 3 equals to 1.732. So here suppose A is the kite and this is the string of length 100 meter. This angle is given 60 degree and we have to find the height of the kite that is AB. Let A be a kite and AC be the string. AC is given 100, angle ACB is 60 degree and we have to find AB. Now in right angle triangle ABC, here this one we have to find, AB we have to find and hypotenuse is given and we know sin theta relates this to, so we can write in right triangle ABC, sin 60 is AB by AC, sin 60 is root 3 by 2 is AB by 100, so if I cross multiply twice AB is 100 root 3, so AB is 100 root 3 by 2. Root 3's value is given 1.732. Now if I cancel these two, I am going to get 100 into 0 
and if I multiply this number with 100, it will be 86.6. So, height of the kite is 86.6 meters. Second part of question number 25, which is for the blind students. Here, first question is value of cot 90. We know cot 90 is 0. So, here answer will be 0. Second question is, if cos theta equals to 1, then find the value of theta. Here, cos theta equals to 1. So, cos theta equals to cos of 0. Therefore, theta equals to 0. Therefore, the given statement is true. In question number C, it is given write down the relation between sin theta, cos theta and tan theta. We know tan theta is sin by cos. So, this is the given relation. Question number 26. Find the coordinates of the point which divides the join of A minus 1,7 and B 4, minus 3 in the ratio 2 is to 3. Here, suppose A is the point which is minus 1,7 and B 4, minus 3 and this line is divided at point P x, y in the ratio 2 is to 3. So, here we have to use section formula. So, coordinate of P that is x, y will be 2 into 4 plus 3 into minus 1 divided by 2 plus 3 and for y component 2 into minus 3 into 3 into 7 divided by 2 plus 3. Now 4 to the 8 minus 3 1 to 3 by 5 and here it will be minus 6 plus 21 by 5. 8 minus 3 is 5, 5 by 5 it will give 1 and here 21 minus 6 will be 15 by 5 that is 3. Therefore the coordinate of P is 1 comma 3. In the second part it is given if the points 2 comma 1 and 1 comma minus 2 are equidistant from the point P x comma y prove that x plus 3y equals to 0. Here it is given that P x comma y is equidistant from A 2 comma 1 and B 1 comma minus 2. So P A and P B these two distances are equal. So we can write here P A equals to P B. Now if I apply distance formula it will be root over x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square and for this part pb equals to x minus 1 whole square plus y minus minus 2 whole square so x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square equals to root over x minus 1 whole square plus y minus minus plus 2 whole square now if you square then root over x square minus twice ab plus b square plus y square minus twice y plus 1 and in the right hand side it is x minus 1 whole square so it will be x square minus twice x plus 1 and in the second part it is y plus 2 whole square so we can get y square plus twice ab plus b square on squaring both sides we are going to get x square minus 4x plus 4 plus y square minus twice y plus 1 because this square root and square they will nullify here also square root and square will nullify so it will be x square minus twice x plus 5 y square plus 4y. Now if you transfer all these terms in the same side then we are going to get x square minus 4x 4 plus 1 5 plus y square minus 2y minus x square plus 2x minus 5 minus y square minus 4y equals to 0. This x square and y square can be cancelled plus 5 and minus 5 also can be cancelled the minus 4x plus 2x it will be minus twice x minus 2y minus 4y it will give minus 6y from this 2 if i take minus 2 common then we are left with x plus 3y equals to 0 because if i take minus 2 in the other side it will become 0 so we got x plus 3y equal to 0 and this is the expression that we have to prove prove that in a right triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of other two sides this is pythagoras theorem so from the textbook you can write this one now see question number 27 second part which is for the blind students define a right triangle now any triangle where one of the angle is 90 degrees is called right triangle so a triangle in which one angle is 90 degrees is called right triangle in the second part it is given the length of the diagonal of a square of side a length of the diagonal if we take this is a square suppose this is a this is a and diagonal is x then x square will be s square plus s square so x square equal to 2s square so x will be root over 2s square which will give root over 2a so the length of the diagonal will be root over 2a in question number 28 it is given that solve the following system of linear equations graphically here equations are 2x minus y equal to 4 and 3y minus x equal to 3 
also find the point where the lines meet the axis of y and here it is given plot at least three points for each graph now here first equation is twice x minus y equals to four now out of this x and y one we have to keep in the left hand side so we are writing twice x minus four this minus y i have shifted in the right hand side so it will become plus y so we got y equal to twice x minus four now we have to take three different values of x and we have to find the corresponding values of y if we take x equal to one then y will be two into one minus four 2 1 the 2 2 minus 4 it will be minus 2 if i take x equal to 2 then y will be 2 into 2 2 2 the 4 4 minus 4 it will give 0 and if x is 3 3 to the 6 6 minus 4 2 so in this way we got three sets of values 1 comma minus 2 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 2 which i have written in this table now second equation is 3y minus x equal to 3 so 3y equal to 3 plus x so y will be 3 plus x divided by 3 now we have to take different values of x but we must be careful we should not get fractional values so if i take x equals to 0 3 plus 0 will be 3 3 by 3 it will be 1 so initially we have taken when x equal to 0 y equal to 3 plus 0 by 3 which will give 3 by 3 means 1 now if i take 1 here 3 plus 1 4 4 by 3 will be a fraction so we are not taking 1 we are taking again 3 if i take 3 here 3 plus 3 6 6 by 3 2 that's why we have written when x equals to 3 y equals to 3 plus 3 by 3 3 plus 3 6 by 3 which will give 2 and in the third case we have taken suppose it is minus 3 3 minus 3 will be 0 so y will be 3 minus 3 by 3 0 by 3 it will be 0 from the first table we got 1 minus 2 so this is the point second we got 2 comma 0 this is the point and third we got 3 comma 2 so these are the three points which we got from table 1 from table 2 we got 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 3 comma 2 and minus 3 comma 0 now if we join these three points and these three points we are going to get two straight lines and these straight lines intersected at 3 comma 2 therefore x equal to 3 and y equal to 2 is the solution of these equations now in the question again it is given we have to find the point where the lines cut the axis of y here you can see the lines cuts the y axis at 0 comma 1 and 0 comma minus 4 so we have to write the answer like this lines intersected each other at 3 comma 2 therefore x equal to 3 and y equal to 2 is the solution again lines meet y axis at 0 comma 1 this is 0 comma 1 and this is 0 comma minus 4 so this is the required answer in the second part of question number 28 it is given solve the following system of linear equations these two equations are given and this question is specially for the blind students now here first equation is 2x plus y equal to 7 second one is 4x minus 3y plus 1 equal to 0 and we have to solve now since no process is mentioned we can use any method here we are going for equating the coefficient so from the first equation it is twice x plus y equal to 7 from the second one it is 4x minus 3y equals to minus 1 if i shift this plus 1 in the other side it will be minus 1 now in the first equation it is twice x second equation it is 4y since we have to make the coefficients equal we can multiply first equation by 2 second one by 1 so multiplying first equation by 2 we got 4x plus 2y equals to 14 we have multiplied all the terms by 2 and second equation we have multiplied by 1 we got 4x minus 3y equal to minus 1 since here also 4x here also 4x so we are subtracting so we have to change the sign this plus will become minus this minus will become plus and this minus will become plus now 4x and 4x will cancel 2 plus 3 5y 14 plus 1 15 that means y equal to 15 by 5 y equal to 3 now since we got y equal to 3 if you put in the first equation first equation was twice x plus 3 equal to 7 and we got y equal to 3 so twice x equal to 7 minus 3 twice x equal to 7 minus 3 4 so x equal to 4 by 2 2 so we got x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 is the required solution in question number 29 it is given that if the total surface area of a solid hemisphere is 462 find the volume of this 
hemisphere here it is given that u pi equal to 22 by 7 here it is given the total surface area of the hemisphere is 462 and total surface area of the hemisphere is 3 pi r square is 462 so 3 pi is 22 by 7 r square is 462 so r square will be 462 this 7 will come in the numerator and 3 and 22 in the denominator 462 if I cancel by 22 it will be 21 so we got 21 into 7 by 3 this 21 again can be cancelled by 3 it will be 7 so r square is 7 square which will give r equal to 7 now we have to find the volume volume of hemisphere formula is 2 by 3 pi r cube so 2 by 3 pi pi is 22 by 7 r cube so 7 into 7 into 7 this 7 can be cancelled so we got 44 into 49 7 7 is 49 by 3 after multiplying it will be 2156 by 3 if I divide, it will be 718.666. If I round off, it will become 718.67. Just because in the third place, it is 5 or more than 5, we have to cancel and we have to add 1. So it will be 718.67 centimeter cube, which is the required volume. In the second part of question number 29, it is given a cone of height 20 centimeter and radius of base 5 centimeter is made up of modeling clay. A child reshapes it in the form of a sphere. Find the diameter of the sphere. So here we are having a cone whose height is 20 cm and base radius is 5 cm. This one is reshaped in the form of a sphere. We have to find the diameter of the sphere. So in case of a cone, height is 20 cm and radius is 5 cm. In case of sphere, since radius is not known, we can consider let it be R. Since cone is reshaped in the form of a sphere, so volume of the cone must be equal to the volume of the sphere. So we can write, since the cone is reshaped in the form of a sphere, volume of sphere equal to volume of cone. The volume of sphere formula is 4 by 3 pi r cube equal to volume of cone is 1 third pi r square each. So r cube equals to 1 third pi r square each into this 3 will go in the numerator and 4 pi come in the denominator pi and pi can be cancelled 3 and 3 can be cancelled so we are going to get r cube equals to 5 square because radius is 5 into height is 20 by 4 4 5 j 20 so we got r cube equal to 5 cube which will give radius equal to 5 centimeter as we have to find the diameter of the sphere diameter is twice of radius 5 into 2 therefore 10 centimeter is the required diameter of the sphere in question number 30, it is given, find the mean of the following data, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. These are the marks and number of students are 12, 18, 27, 20, 17 and 6. We have to find the mean. Here I am using step deviation method. Here these marks are given and number of students are given. First of all, we have to calculate class mark. For class mark, we have to add these two values and we have to divide by 2. 0 plus 10, 10. 10 by 2, 5. 10 plus 20, 30. 30 by 2, 15. In this way, we got these values. Now, from this class marks, we have considered 25 to be the assumed mean. Now, we have to subtract all the xi from 25. So, we are writing di equals to, which is deviation, equal to xi minus a. And a, we have considered 25. So, 5 minus 25 it will give minus 20 15 minus 25 minus 10 25 minus 25 0 35 minus 25 it will give 10 45 minus 25 20 55 minus 25 30 after calculating deviation we have to calculate ui which is di by h here class size is 10 so we have to divide all these values by 10 if i divide minus 20 by 10 it will be minus 2 minus 10 by 10 minus 1 0 by 10, 0, 10 by 10, 1, 20 by 10, 2, 30 by 10, 30, 30 by 10, 3. Now, if I multiply fi ui, fi into ui, 12 into minus 2, minus 24, 18 into minus 1, minus 18, 27 into 0, 0, 20 into 1, 20, 17 into 2, 34, 6 into 3, 18. If I add all the number of students, it will be 100. And here, all the negatives will first add, we will get minus 42. And all the positive numbers, if I add, it will be 72. 
after subtracting it will be 30 so summation of these values is 30 and summation of this one is 100 here we are using step deviation method let assume mean a is 25 as we have considered and h is 10 so by step deviation method formula is mean x bar equals to a plus summation fi ui by summation fi into h a is 25 plus fi ui we got 30 so we are writing 30 summation of fi is 100 into 10 h is 10 because class size is 10 0 and 0 can be cancelled this 0 also can be cancelled 25 plus 3 is 28 therefore required mean is 28 in the second part it is given find the mode of the following frequency distribution class intervals are given frequency is given and we have to find the mode now after preparation of the table we found that 75 is the maximum frequency so the class corresponding to 75 that is 20 to 25 is the model class so this will be f0 this will be f1 this will be f2 so here we have to write like this since the maximum frequency is 75 and the class corresponding to this frequency is 20 to 25 so the model class is 20 to 25 here lower limit of the model class l is 20 size of the model class h is 5 because here class intervals 10 to 15 15 to 20 so size of each class is 5 frequency of the model class frequency of the model class if you see this table frequency of the model class this is 75 this is f1 which is written as f1 frequency of the class preceding the model class is 45 which is written as f0 and frequency of the class succeeding the model class 35 that is f2 here I have written L equals to 20, H equals to 5, F1 equal to 75, F0 equal to 45 and F2 is 35. Now we know the formula for mode is L plus F1 minus F0 by 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2 into H. Here if you want you can give one bracket. Now 20 plus F1 minus F0 75 minus 45 twice f1 f1 is 75 so 2 into 75 minus 45 minus 35 into 5. So it will be 20 plus 75 minus 45 is 30, 150, 75 into 2 is 150 minus 18 to 5. So 20 plus 30 into 70, 150 minus 80 is 70 plus 5, 0, 0 can be cancelled, 15 by 7. If we take the LCM, it will be 7. 7 into 20, 140 plus 7 divided by 7, 1, 1 into 15, 15. 140 plus 15 is 155 by 7. If I divide, it will be 22.142. So answer is 22.14, which is the required mode. In question number 31, question is the common difference of the AP 4, 1, minus 2, minus 5 is here A is 4 and common difference is second term minus first term 1 minus 4 and 1 minus 4 is minus 3. So answer is option B. Second question is every composite number can be expressed as a product of answer will be primes so the answer of second part is primes option a third question in which quadrant does the point minus 2 comma 6 lie minus 2 comma 6 lie in the second quadrant to so answer will be second quadrant which is option b fourth question the area of a circle of radius r we know area of a circle is pi r square so answer is option a next question is define constant polynomial a polynomial of degree 0 is called a constant polynomial for example px equal to 5 next question is if the polynomial ax square plus bx plus c is a perfect square then b square equal to 4ac whether it is true or false we know if it is a perfect square d equal to 0 so b square minus 4ac equals to 0 that means b square equal to 4ac so the statement is true next question is what is the degree of a cubic polynomial here degree of a cubic cubic polynomial is 3. Question number 8. Find the circumference of a circle whose radius is 10.5 meter. Here we know circumference formula is 2 pi r. Here radius is 10.5 meter. So radius equals to 105 by 10. If I cancel by 5 it will be 21 by 2. So circumference will be 2 pi r. 2 into 22 by 7 into 21 by 3. 2 and 2 can be cancelled. 7 3 is 21. So answer is 66 centimeter. Now question number I, here it is given that how many tangents can be drawn to a circle from a point outside the circle. If I draw a circle from a point outside, we, have, we can draw maximum 2 tangents. So answer will be 2 tangents. 
in question number j it is given each quadratic equation has at most two roots we have to check whether it is true or false the statement is true in k write the value of sec of 60 sec 60 value is 2 because cos of 60 is half so sec of 60 is opposite of cos 60 so answer is 2 next question is the total surface area of a right circular cylinder of radius r and height h it will be 2 pi r h plus r question number m a polynomial having dash terms is called binomial since it is binomial there will answer will be two terms answer will be two question number n pi is an irrational number true or false the statement is true now question number 32 first question is express 0 0.125 as a rational number so we can write 0 0.125 as 125 by 1000 125 if you cancel with 1000 it will be 1 by 8 so the answer is 1 by 8 question number b it is given that find the zeros of the polynomial x square minus twice x minus 3 so x square minus twice x minus 3 if you middle term it then instead of 2 we can write 3 minus 1 so x square minus 3 minus 1 into x minus 3 x square minus 3x plus x minus 3 from first 2 i can take x common x minus 3 from last 2 if i take 1 common x minus 3 so x minus 3 x plus 1 now since we have to find zeros we have to write px equal to 0 so either x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 1 equal to 0 so x equal to 3 or x equal to minus 1 therefore zeros are 3 and minus 1 in question number c it is given that find the distance between a comma 0 and 0 comma b here we can consider x1 y1 is a comma 0 and x2 y2 is 0 comma b if you use distance formula then distance will be a minus 0 whole square plus 0 minus b whole square a minus 0 is a a square plus 0 minus b is minus b square is plus b square so answer is root over a square plus b square in question number d it is given find the area of the minor sector where it is given that the radius is 14 centimeter and angle is 90 degree area of the sector formula is pi r square theta by 360 so pi is 22 by 7 r square r is 14 so 14 square 14 into 14 into theta is 90 by 360 94 to 360 7 to the 14 so 22 into 2 into 14 by 4 2 to the 2 11 ja. so 11 into 14 that will give 154 therefore area of the minor sector is 154 centimeter square number e question is a die is thrown once what is the probability of getting a number other than 4 here when a die is thrown possible outcomes are 1 2 3 4 5 6 therefore number of possible outcomes 6 again number of favorable outcomes will be 5 because it is given other than 4 so 1 2 3 5 6 4 will not be there therefore probability of a number other than 4 will be 5 by 6 in question number f it is given the difference between two numbers is 26 and one number is three times the other find the numbers here we can consider let the numbers be x and 26 plus x as it is given difference between two numbers is 26 so if you consider first number to be x then second number will be 26 plus x now according to the question if one number is three times the other out of these two this is the bigger number so bigger number is three times the smaller so 26 equal to 3x minus x 26 is 2x so x equal to 26 by 2 so x equal to 13 therefore numbers are first number is 13 second number is 26 plus 13 which will give 39 now question number g question is find the coordinate of the midpoint of the line segment joining the points p 7 comma 0 and q minus 5 comma 4 we know the midpoint formula x1 plus x2 by 2 and y1 plus y2 by 2 so here you have to add 7 minus 5 by 2 0 plus 4 by 2 7 minus 5 is 2 2 by 2 it will give 1 0 plus 4 is 4 4 by 2 is 2 so the coordinate of the midpoint is 1 comma 2 in question number 8 it is given find the sum of first 100 natural numbers so natural number starts from 1 so we have to find the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 100 so here a is 1 d is 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 and n equals to 100 so sum of n terms formula is n by 2 twice a plus n minus 1 into d 100 by 2 2 into 1 plus n minus 1 that is 100 minus 1 into d so 50 
100 by 2 is 50, 2 1 is 2, 100 minus 1 it is 99, into 1 is 99. So, 99 plus 2 101, 15 to 101 it will give 5050 which is the required sum. In question number i it is given, if 2 cos of 3x is 1, we have to find the value of x. So, cos of 3x will be 1 divided by 2 cos of 3x is cos of 60 because we know half is cos of 60 so 3x equal to 60 x equal to 60 by 3 which will give 20 therefore required value of x is 20 in question number j it is given if alpha and beta are the zeros of 3x square minus twice x minus 6 find the value of 1 by alpha 1 by beta now we know sum of zeros is minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square here coefficient of x is minus 2, so it will be minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square, so it will give 2 by 3 and product of zeros is constant term by coefficient of x square, so minus 6 by 3, it will give minus 2. Now 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta, if you take the LCM, it will be alpha beta, alpha beta divided by alpha is beta, so beta plus alpha beta divided by beta is alpha, so here we have written alpha. Now alpha plus beta we got 2 by 3 and alpha beta is minus 2. So it will be 2 by 3 divided by minus 2. So 2 by 3 into 1 by minus 2. This 2 and 2 can be cancelled. So answer is minus 1 by 3. In the last sum of this question paper, question is determine the value of k for which x equal to 1 is a solution of the equation x square plus kx plus 3 equals to 0. As it is given x equal to 1 is the solution, so we can replace x by 1. So it will be 1 square plus k into 1 plus 3 equals to 0. 1 square is 1 plus k into 1 k plus 3 equals to 0. So k plus 3 plus 1 4 equals to 0. Therefore k equal to minus 4. I hope these sums are clear. In my next video I am going to show sums of question paper of 2020. Till then bye bye take care and wait for the next part.